Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. I am Shreya Mukherjee and today we will be learning some basics of organic chemistry. So out of different topics, I have chosen substitution reaction because I think this is a good start for getting an understanding about the different types of reaction of organic chemistry. So as the name suggests, substitution means we are substituting something. So, uh, substitution reaction can be defined as a reaction in which the functional group of one chemical compound is substituted by another group. And this can be in different ways. It can be an electrophilic substitution, nucleophilic substitution. And under nucleophilic substitution, we again have different types, which I will discuss further. So, here it actually involves replacement or substitution of one atom or, of a, or a molecule of the compound with another. And here we must remember one thing that uh, the substitution will be favorable only when the previous group that is the one which we need to substitute is a very good leaving group so by leaving group it means that it is leaving the compound so it must not form very strong bonds or the bond which by which it is attached to the particular compound is weak enough or is favorable enough for getting hydrolyzed so that it can be removed and replaced by another group so now coming to the nucleophilic substitution reaction as the name suggests nucleophile means the one which has electron rich chemical species that is it loves that is philic towards a nucleus or a positive charge species so chemical reaction when an electron rich chemical species replaces a functional group in an electron deficient molecule is a nucleophilic substitution reaction now coming to different types we have sn1 sn2 sni that is intramolecular and snar that is SN aromatic in this video i will mainly focus on sn1 and sn2 so coming to sn1 reaction so the first thing which we need to understand the nomenclature that is SN substitution nucleophilic what is one one here it's not one step it's first order order of a reaction is uh, it is like when the rate of the reaction is dependent on how much exponential power of the particular reactant it is dependent on like R if it is equal to K Suppose we have a reaction from A to B. So here, if R is dependent on the rea uh, rate of the rea uh, sorry on the concentration of the reactant A to the power of n, and n is the order of the reaction, and this order of the reaction again it can depend on different factors in how the reaction is happening, how many steps the reaction can be. Here we can assume that since it is a single moiety it is n equal to 1 but sometimes even if, if if there is another moiety says c a plus c gives b still it might be dependent on only a so it will be a first order only it will not depend on c and it depends uh, and it is mainly determined by different factors so just as a mnemonic we need to understand that one means first order but it is of two steps what are the two steps? The first is the slowest step, it is the rate determining step, and the second one is a faster step. So, suppose we have this compound where we have three methyl groups attached to a carbon having the bromine. bromide. So, here the Br will try to leave as it is a very good leaving group because of its uh, electronegativity as well as its large volume or large size. So, after this RDS, a carbocation is forming. Now, the electrophile, uh, this is the electrophile because it wants to be attacked by an elect, uh, like an electron rich species. The nucleophile, that is the OH minus, it might attack this particular carbocation in two ways, either in the front direction or in the back direction. And based on the chances of attack, since this uh, particular uh, species, whatever carbocation it is forming, it will be a planar one having sp2 hybridization. So the chances of attack can be from either side. So depending on the orientation of its attack, uh, the final product which we form might have 50% retention or 50% inversion. 50% retention means it is retaining the conformation of its uh, reactant inversion means it is just inverting or getting opposite to that of the reactant 
So again, a recap of SN1, where it is a first order reaction having two steps. The rate determining step is the carbocation formation, and we have 50% retention, 50% inversion. That is a racemic mixture made form because of the presence of uh, the two enantiomers. Now. One factor which we need to understand is the formation of this carbocation. This carbocation plays a very important role, and we have to remember one thing: a carbocation will always try to have its charge lowered. A stable carbocation is one in which this positive charge will get low, and this can be done with the help of the inductive effect by the methyl groups. So as it has having it is having this plus i effect this positive charge because of the plus i effect the electrons are getting pushed towards this a uh, positive center and the positive charge is decreasing so it is one of the key rules of any or, any organic moiety that the organic moiety tries to get its charge reduced so as this carbocation gets more stabilized the chances of sn1 reaction will increase so we must understand that 3 degree that is the tertiary carbon will be more prone towards the sn1 compared compared to the secondary and then the primary why in primary because if we consider just a ch3br molecule here in this uh, ch3br there is no uh, external uh, plus i effect of this hydrogens there is no effect of this hydrogens so the whatever ch3 plus will be forming it will not be stabilized but if this hydrogens are replaced by some uh, electron donating group or plus i effect groups by like the ch3 methyl groups or ethyl groups the plus charge will decrease so for sn1 reaction the 3 degree carbons are more stable than the 2 degree and 1 degree why we need polar protic solvent because this plus charge and this minus o is minus these will be more stabilized in a polar and protic solvent protic means a solvent like methanol methanol or water which gives h plus so this h plus will stabilize the oh minus and the uh, negative the anion on the polar anion will stabilize the cation and as both the uh, anion and the cation get stabilized the chances of sn1 reaction will increase So, as I already explained, the rate law is determined as k, which is a constant r minus x, where r minus x can be the substrate, and it is dependent on the factor of one. So, it's a first order reaction. A typical example is alkaline hydrolysis of tertiary butyl bromide, which I have already explained. This is the energetics where we are starting with this substrate, and the intermediate uh, after uh, the high energy, there will be a an intermediate energy. of this carbocation and why this carbocation is driven further to form this product is because of the low energy of this substrate so as we already know whatever every substance tries to be in a low energy state because low energy is favorable because high energy means it's more reactive it's more unstable so compared when we compare the uh, energy difference between the two we will see that this particular uh, rea rea reactant or product sorry this particular product is more energetically stable now coming to sn2 again being the mnemonic two doesn't indicate the step two means second order and it's a first step react or oh, sorry one step reaction how one step but two order like second order so here we can see again here it's only a simple a uh, ch3br molecule and oh minus is attacking from the back side and br being a good leaving group is trying to leave so here we are getting only one step which is a transition state is happening where si simultaneously the br is trying to get removed and the oh is trying to get attached and after that br minus is able to get removed and oh gets attached as oh minus is attacking from the back side the whole conformation changes and it's on 100% inversion the conformation is just opposite to that of its starting material and here the second order is because 
the rate is dependent both on the CH3 BR as well as the nucleophile. Higher the nucleophile concentration, more will be the chances of this nucleophile to attack. Higher the substrate, more will be the chances of the nucleophile to attack the substrate. So it is depending on both the nucleophile and the substrate. Now, why uh, we are telling here that 1 degree carbon and 2 degree carbon and 3 degree carbon, this is the stability or the chances of the particular carbons to undergo SN2 because here the carbocations are not playing any role. Whatever role is played by steric hindrance. If we are replacing this H by methyl group, suppose, as we have more methyl group, this part will be more crowded. So the chances of OH minus to attack will be less because of the methyl groups or the bulky groups. So if the number of bulky groups is less, chances of SN2 reaction is more. So primary carbons have more tendency to attack SN2 compared to secondary and tertiary. And here we don't need any kind of protons. Polar aprotic solvent is enough. This polar aprotic solvent has no charged species in which to stabilize the carbocation formation. And hence uh, the use of the solvent tends to reaction to follow SN2 where we don't need any kind of stabilization of charged species basically. So here again, the rate law is uh, R equal to K A and B, where A is the concentration of the substrate and B is that of a nucleophile. Simple alkaline hydrolysis of methyl bromine, which I have shown, it is an example. And when we compare the reaction uh, energy graph, we will see there's only a transition state whose energy is very much high, so it's highly unstable and it tends to come back uh, to this methanol. So the reaction is favorable in the following direction. Now coming to some questions uh, which we can solve is first is which one of the is which one is more reactive towards SN1 reaction. So whenever we see SN1 reaction, one means carbocation formation we have to see. So whichever uh, compound will form a stable carbocation, it is more favorable to SN1. Here we can see in this particular uh, CH, uh, we, have a myth, uh, we have a phenyl group, another phenyl group, and a hydrogen. And then we have the bromine. So after the bromine leaves, this CH will get the positive charge. And this positive charge will be resonance stabilized by uh, uh, these two phenyl groups. So th there is a possibility. Now next again, after the leaving of the bromine, this CH will get the positive charge. Here we have the phenyl group and we also have a methyl group. This is because of the resonance, the phenyl group is favoring the stabilization of the carbocation and methyl will favor the uh, inductive effect. So there is again, there is a chance. Next we have two phenyl groups. If after removal, we will, yes, we will have two phenyl group, one methyl group. So again, it's a very good chance and here uh, there's only one phenyl group, two hydrogens. So this first only we will just deselect. Now what are the factors we are getting? Here we are getting resonance, resonance. Here we are getting resonance and inductive. Here we are getting resonance, inductive, again resonance. Here only resonance. Now, we will always remember resonance stabilization is much more important compared to inductive effect. So, if we compare the second answer, the second option will be not correct because we have one resonance and one inductive stabilization where in comparison to 1 and 3, there are two resonance. So, compared to 1 and 3, if again we see there will be uh, high chances of 3 to be the answer just because we have not only two resonance stabilization in addition we have a uh, inductive effect of the methyl. So answer will be number 3. Second coming to SN2 substitution reaction of this type here we can see DMM. DMM is a aprotic solvent because it doesn't release any proton. The highest relative rate will be so when we are again seeing SN2 means carbon not carbocation steric here we will mainly focus on steric factor so lesser the number of bulky groups more will be the fav more favorite group. so uh, first uh, if we see bromine might leave from here 
so it will make a positive charge but here we have this group this group is a bulky group if bromine lives from here again we have this as a bulky group so two will be no if it is living from here this whole thing will be a very big bulky group so definitely no now chain, chain length wise obviously we will favor a lesser chain length because this ethyl will be less bulky compared to propyl so the answer will be four uh, for this particular problem, we will again see because it's an SN1. We will see after removal of bromine, uh, which will be the more stable. Here it is forming a 3 degree carbon cation. Here it is forming a 2 degree carbon cation. Here it is forming 1 degree. Here it is forming 1 degree. Just don't get confused by uh, the location of like. All the compounds are looking similar, but just check where the bromine atoms are. You might just feel that okay, here the pH is there, the carbocation one might form here. No, just from the particular carbon, from where the bromine is removing, you have to select that. So, based on this, the answer will be no. So, thank you so much. And in the next class, we will be discussing more on the different other types of substitution reaction. And till then, just keep learning. Thank you.